Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about how to make a multi-guild counting bot. Um, you can see that I have a video um, on how to make a counting bot that only works with one server. So I thought, let's show people how to make a multi-guild counting bot. Now, as a requirement to this, you're going to have to have done my last video, which is um, the Discord JS Postgres um, video. I'll uh, link that in the description. So um, if you're interested in doing this, um, look, go through that video and um, you know make a full repository or use this as a template um, and then you can get started. Um, the one thing that is, if you use this as a template, you need to make sure that you set up Docker and Postgres because um, they are a requirement for a multi-guild Discord bot that's durable. And when we say the word durable, that means that when the bot goes down, um, the state of the bot is still there. So if you have a bunch of people counting in channels and your bot crashes or your server goes down, you don't want the counting to have to restart. You want it to be durable. So that means that, you know, when it starts back up, it starts back where it started. Um, and so using a database will make that durable. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use this template here. Um, to start this, we're going to call it multi Discord JS multi guild counting bot. We'll say it is a bot for counting many servers. We're going to create this repository. Now, once we have this created, let's talk a little bit about like why do we need a database to do multi server counting that's durable? So, for one, you need to actually make sure you need to keep track of what number each channel and each server is counting to. Um, you could use some sort of map or like a, an object in JavaScript like that. But what happens when the bot crashes? Um, you know, it, when the bot crashes, uh, it's going to completely get rid of your state. Um, you could store in a JSON file, but that's going to easily corrupt. So the best solution here is just to use a, some kind of database. I'm going to use Postgres. You could use any kind of SQL with my last video. Um, I, I talked about that a little bit. Um, or you could use any other database and just use this as inspiration. Okay, so once we have this, um, you know, this repository open, um, assuming you followed the last video, you should have a fully set up repository. If you don't and you pull down the template, that's okay. And um, we need to fill in some values. So remember, you need to fill in that dev.env file um, with the necessary information. Um, you can find more about that in the in the actual template itself um, or from my last video. I'll talk about that. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. Uh, so you can see here, I've filled in the last variables um, in this .env file um, from my last video. Um, this should work exactly with the Postgres instance that's set up. Um, but we need to actually generate a new uh, Discord token and client ID because this is a completely different bot. So how do you actually generate a Discord token and client ID? You're going to go to this discord.com slash developer slash applications. Again, like I've shown, you're going to get a new application. You're going to call this multi guild counting. We're going to create the bot. We're going to the bot channel. We're going to press add bot. Do it. We're going to reset our token. Once we have this token here, we can take this back to the env file and paste it in. But we also need to get the client ID. So we get the client ID from the general information page. We can copy application ID. So we're going to paste this application ID in. And not everything should be good here. And the last thing let's do is let's go ahead and add our bot to our server. So remember to add the bot to the server, we're going to go to the OAuth2 page here. We're going to go to the URL generator. We'll say bot administrator. And then we will copy and paste this link into the browser and add it to your server that you're going to test. Now that we have everything working here, if you just pull down the repository, make sure you npm i and install any dependencies. Okay, now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and um, start the bot and make sure it works from the start because we don't want to uh, work from a broken state. Okay, so if this privilege antenna is not enabled or whitelist. So the way to get around this is going to go to your bot, go to um, inside of bot here, and you're going to go to presence, or sorry, um, server members intent and message content intent. And now you should be able to start your bot. Perfect. You can see everything started. Client was initialized. It loaded the interactions. Um, now we can actually start making the counting bot. So when we think about, you know, how we want to uh, model this, this counting bot, we want, we want to actually make a, a table. And that's what we're going to start with here. So we can go into this models folder inside the database and we're going to say counting server. So if we put one of our other models to the side here just as a, you know, a thing to work off of, we can see that we need these top two lines. We need the const db and the cons, uh, and the model types and data types. We're going to go ahead and create a class called counting server. It extends the model. And remember, I talked more about this in my last video. So if this is something that's completely new to you, um, just check out my last video. It'll, it'll really help you, um, you know, work with this. So we have this here, we have this associate, so we can associate any models to it, which we don't actually need to do. And we're going to init this. So we're going to say counting server.init. We're going to have two objects inside of here. And let's go and export this object real quick, just so I don't forget. So the second object is going to be paranoid true, just so we get a little auto log. We're going to say sequelize db, and that passes in the connection. And we're going to say model name. We're going to name this counting server inside of the Postgres instance. So now let's actually add the fields. What do we need here? So the first thing we need is, you know, 
the channel ID that's going to be a part of the counting channel. So I'm going to say channel ID. The type is going to be a data type of string. This is going to be unique because we don't want multiple rows in here. And then we're going to have current number. And it's going to be an integer. And this should be perfect. So now that we have this model here, we need to actually hook it up to the bot. And how are we going to do this? We're going to go to this index file. Let's go ahead and add this uh, counting server model to it because we want to export this. And then we're going to actually create a new interaction. Now, an interaction is, is a command. It's a slash command. So we're going to new file. Let's do set channel. What users are going to have to do to flag a channel as a um, counting channel is actually, you know, is run the command inside of it. So let's put one of these other commands to the side so we have a good model for it. We see that we're going to need the first line. We're going to need the slash command builder. And we're going to need that to require that from Discord.js. And then we're going to export a module of the slash command. So we're going to say module exports equals this object. The first thing we need is data. So we're going to say new slash command builder. I like to indent it like this. We're going to set the name. Let's say, let's call it a uh, set counting channel. Description sets the counting channel. Work counting. And then we're going to add an option to this. We're going to add an option to this. So I would say I would add a channel option. Um, this is going to be really easy for users to actually choose a channel from uh, the channel list. Uh, and, and it'll actually validate it. Discord will validate it for you. So that's what's really nice about it. So we're going to set the name of this to be uh, channel. And we'll set the description of this to be the channel to count. Then the next thing we need is the actual, uh, the meat of the code to actually execute, you know, what, what we want to happen. So we're going to say interaction and user. So now with this function here, we need to actually, you know, execute the interaction. So the first thing we're going to need is the channel from the interaction. So we're going to say const channel equals interaction options dot get. We're going to say channel. And we need the value from that. I'm not quite sure how the value comes through yet for channel options. So we're going to check that out later. I'm going to assume that it's either a channel object or the ID, but we'll figure that out in a minute. So the, the, let's go ahead and reply to the interaction. So it shows that it's successful and say reply successfully set counting. So what do we need to do inside of here? We need to actually use this model that we created earlier to set a counting channel. So again, we're going to say const counting channel equals require. We're going to go out one in the, in the directory structure, database slash models. And that's going to, that's going to get us the right thing. I think we should actually rename this to counting channel because that's just something I didn't think about when I was doing it. So let's call this counting channel. And as long as you have this DB uh, sync set up in the environment variable uh, file, it'll automatically sync all this stuff for you. That's why it's really nice. Okay, so now we're going to actually save a counting channel. So we're going to say await new counting channel. And inside of this, it doesn't look like it's, it's importing right. Oh, right, because we have to fix this. Inside of this uh, index file in this models, we need to call this counting channel now, just because I changed that. Okay, so now we're going to actually go back to the set channel command and we're going to actually create this. So we're going to say await new counting channel and we're going to pass in the properties. So if we look back in the model, um, we had a channel ID and a current number. So the channel ID is going to be channel. We're going to be channel ID of channel. I'm not sure uh, what this comes out as quite yet, um, but we'll see in a minute. And the current number is zero. We're going to do dot save at the end. This is going to create a new counting channel in the database. So let's actually check this out inside of Discord. Something that I immediately realized when I started this is actually we should probably call this set channel because I think it might be too long for Discord to register. So once we've actually done this, we can actually go to Discord and we can try it out now. So let's say slash set channel. We're going to pass in the channel and let's again call it the counting channel. Okay, you can see that we encountered an error. So clearly something was not right here. Okay, now that you've fully set up this command here, I would suggest actually changing the name of the command to set channel instead of set counting channel because it seems like it's too long for Discord um, and it will throw a validation error. So go ahead and change this up here to set channel. 
and you'll see that we have actually, um, you know, we can go test it now. So once this is finished registering our commands, um, uh, we'll go ahead and test. So now that our bot's running, we're going to say set channel, channel, and we'll do counting. Okay, so now we want to actually look inside the PG admin and, and look at the data and see if it was created. So we're going to go to PG admin, we're going to go to rat, we're going to go to your database, whatever it's called, and go to your tables, and let's go to counting channels. We're going to go to view all rows, and we see that we created a counting channel here. Okay, this is perfect. So now we have the foundation for actually creating multiple counting channels. So what we're now we, what we need to do now is we need to actually create logic for the counting channel. So we're going to go back to the bot now. And if we actually go to an event, um, if we go to message create, we can actually go ahead and add the logic now for, um, you know, counts. So let's go ahead and remove this stuff up here because we don't really care about users for the purpose of this bot right now. Um, and let's go ahead and, and say const counting channel equals, and we need to actually grab counting channel from up here. Counting channel, await counting channel dot find one. And we're going to say where e dot channel dot id or sorry we're actually going to say channel id is e dot channel dot id and what this is going to do is tell us if this is a counting channel so we're going to say if this is a counting channel if counting channel dot get then we need to actually handle the counting logic and actually i would maybe suggest um adding this doing this get somewhere else. Um, so we can probably just say if counting channel, we can say const math counting channel equals counting channel dot get. And that's just going to grab the data from the actual database model. Um, that's important because you'll get this huge object back that you don't really care about. Okay, so if this is a counting channel, then we can go ahead and proceed with our counting logic. So we're going to do this exactly like we did before. So this is a counting channel, we know that. So let's just do the logic for counting. So if number of e dot content equals 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 a math counting channel dot current number plus one then we proceed if it does not then counting restarts so when counting restarts let's go ahead and handle that so we're gonna say wait e dot reply counting has restarted from zero but how do we store this state that it's actually restarted? So we're going to say await counting channel dot update. We're going to say current number is zero. We're going to say where channel ID is equal to e dot channel dot ID. And then up here, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to increase count the number, the current number by one, but we need to do that inside of the database. So what are we going to do? We can go and copy this from down here and we can say await counting channel update. Same thing you see here. We're going to change this counting current number of zero to current number is mapped counting channel that current number plus one. So let's let the bot start up and let's go ahead and actually test. So obviously we need to set a counting channel. If we do one, two, five right now, we see nothing happens. That's good. That is an expected behavior. So let's say set channel, channel counting. Let's get one, two, five. Counting restarted from zero. This is perfect. So we have this in a state now that's working. But let's actually test the multi-channel part of this because that's the most important thing. So if we go to create channel and we say counting two, we're gonna create channel. Now let's, let's just try counting to make sure that's expected behavior. Nothing happens, that's good. So let's say set channel, channel is counting two. Now let's try one, two, five. Counting has restarted from zero. Okay, we have the expected behavior again. Now let's try one more thing. Let's say, let's start counting on this channel. One, two. Let's go to, let's do three here. You see, you see it's gonna restart from zero. That's good. Now let's do three here. You see it didn't re restart from zero. Let's try five here. It restarted from zero. So now we have the expected behavior. So you can see with this small amount of code, we can actually make a multi-guild um, counting bot. Uh, we use Postgres to store the state. And if we restart this bot, we should expect um, the state to be stored. Now, remember, if you have the value set in your environment variables um, that forces the DB to sync, that's going to actually wipe the database every time. So once you have your bot completed, turn that off. Um, but we have the expected behavior now of a multi-guild counting bot. I'm going to put this template on my GitHub and I'll put it in the description below. But this is a very quick and very easy way to make a multi-guild counting bot. Uh, thanks as always. If you like the video, leave it a like. 
Um, and if you like my content, then subscribe to me. Thank you.